Hi there guys and girls and welcome to the last video about my E3 Mortal Kombat impressions. This video is pretty much just a wrap up but I've got something special for you at the end. Um, so I've just got a few things left to cover uh, to say. Uh, so I've made it just a list here so I'm sort of just going to go through it. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the sound in the in the game in the build uh, the music was pretty like I said uh, in the Living Forest level um, it was this the Mortal Kombat 2 Living Forest tune um, I can't really remember the sound from the other stages and you know I could only just hear it it was very very low there's all you know people there's still no noise everywhere at E3 you know people laughing or, and talking going on so it's not easy to hear everything um, but when I was playing it you know uh, I did get to hear a lot of the sound effects. Um, they're really, really unique, different. You know, they're not the same things we've heard from previous games. So the sound's really crunchy. It's really, really, really good. It's re makes the experience really good. Um, I, I, in in my Ed Boon interview, if you watched it, I'm sure you did. It's up to I think 10,100 uh, views last time I looked. So thanks for everyone for watching it. Um, I asked Ed about the music, and he said. It's going to be like a reimagining, um, so what I'd call a remix. Uh, so the music they had was the in the Living Forest was the identical Living Forest tune, but by the time it comes out, it's probably going to be like the same tune, but you know changed around a bit. You know, remix, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that's a good. That's good. Um, the other thing a lot of you guys wanted to know about was controls. Now, in my last video, I talked about the mechanics. Now, when I talked about the mechanics, it was because, excuse me, I wanted to talk about how how it affected the gameplay. But a lot of people you ask, but how do you do this? How do you do these moves? I really didn't think that was that important because by the time you have the game in your hands, you'll know. But uh, I'll tell you guys. Let me just get my Xbox. Okay. So, got to think back now. <laughs> um, now, the first thing I'll talk about was super moves. People wanted to know how to do a super move. So, you did basically say you were doing Sub-Zero, or let's say Reptile's Force Ball, right? So, forward, forward, both buttons is how you do that. Now, to do a super move, instead of pressing both buttons, you pressed also press the, the trigger and the bumper at the same time. So, um, I don't know what I think now. Is it all? I don't think you pushed. I'm confused now. Okay, you either so say say you say you were doing the force ball. It would be forward forward X and A, but I can't remember if you pushed the bumper and the trigger as well at the same time. If you pushed all four, or if you just pushed the bumper and the trigger. Either way, that's how you did the super move. And instead of the standard move coming out, you know, standard force ball, you got a bigger one to come across the screen. A lot of you also asked me about kicks and moves. Like I said, I really didn't pay attention to that sort of thing. It was too much to remember. You gotta remember there's eight characters playable at E3 and they all had different sort of kicks and punches, you know. But like I said, when the game comes out, you'll have a full listing of that. Um, they did have a list in front of me, you know, uh, a book, but we weren't allowed to take photos of it. We weren't allowed to do anything, you know, which is a real shame because it had all the artwork. All that artwork that the Game Informer magazine had was in this book, all eight uh, character pictures, so they had uh, artwork of, of Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Reptile, Sector, Johnny Cage, Molina, Kung Lao, who I'll leave out. Mm, I left out someone. All eight characters. Um, yeah, and then it had like their special moves in, in this book, you know. Um, but yeah, we wanted like, to take pictures, so. Um, yeah. When, see, even though for the last, you know, since Deadly Alliance, we haven't had high punch, low punch in that, I've still sort of thought of these buttons the same way. Like, um, and it, when I play the game, I imagine that they're still sort of that way, you know, like these, these are sort of low, low attacks and these are sort of high attacks. That sort of works for me. Um, and then, you know, they added the trips and the uppercuts in Armageddon, you know, so... You know, oh, sorry, not um, Armageddon, in um, MKDC, they added, they had the sweeps back in MKDC, you know, you could do the, the trips a lot easier. Um, so I've sort of just always played it like that. Um, 
Yeah, so, I mean, as far as controls go, that's that's pretty much it. Like, like I said, I was just doing the special moves, standard sort of fly kicks, punches, you know. I really wasn't focusing on the all the moves of each character, you know. I'd need a lot more time if I did that. Uh, Alright, now... The next thing I'll say is, today, uh, Dan Ford and accepted my friend request on Facebook, which is cool. Uh, I sent it a while ago and nothing happened. Um, I guess it was inactive because um, he's added a lot of friends today or the last day in on Facebook. Um, now, the thing about that is, um, I checked out his page and he's listed for Warner Brothers Games as the lead sound designer, which is cool, which means he's probably doing the music, but there is no confirmation yet. But I'm sure he is because those are his tunes, those are his babies. You know, those, um, the Living Forest, you know, the Portal, whatever, those MK2, MK1, MK3 tunes, they're his. You know, so if anyone can remix them, Dan Forden can, and he'll do a great fucking job. So, hopefully, he's doing the whole thing. Um, if not, he's overseeing it, I'm sure. So, it's, it's going to be good either way. I'm happy about that. Um, someone sent me a, a comment uh, on one of my videos about Tony Gosky not doing the backgrounds for Mortal Kombat, and I, I, I tried to look into it, and I couldn't find it, and I just said, oh, okay, sort of thing. At first, I'm like, no, he did, and then this guy was like, no, no, he didn't, you know, and I just wanted to say, I found out for sure yesterday, he did do the background, so, you're wrong, man, you're wrong, and I've got the proof, you know, so, Tony Gosky did do the Mortal Kombat backgrounds for Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, you know, for sure, because I've got the MK1 and 2 audio CD, and on the back of that, it's got Tony Gosky backgrounds, John Vogel, additional background graphics, so John Vogel helped out. He was, um, this guy was saying John Vogel did the MK1 backgrounds or something, but uh, Tony Gosky did the majority and Vogel helped out, so that's that out the way. Uh, one other thing I'll talk about is um, the blood decal system. I, I don't think I mentioned this in any of my previous videos. So as the match is going on, right, um, you, you're fighting, you, you, you get beaten up, you, your clothes get torn and ripped, and there's like blood all over you. And the cool thing is, as you're punching the crap out of the other guy, you know, if you're making him bleed, the blood like splatters on him and sort of sticks to his clothes and and it looks real badass, you know, like by the end of the match you look like just covered in blood and the other guy's covered in blood, you know, and it just lo it looks really awesome, you know, and I forgot to mention it. So I just wanted to uh throw that in there, you know. Uh, it's it's a really cool look for the film. For the film. <laughs> for the game. Sorry, I've got, a, I've got a lot of things on the brain at the moment. I've got all these videos I've got to do and I'm trying to catch up, so. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. This is a quick one, uh, as far as me talking goes. Now what I'm going to do now is, because I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions and, you know, I might not have answered them in my videos, I'm going to open the floor for a Q&A. I haven't done a Q&A for a long time, so if you guys submit your questions in the comments box, I will answer them in the next video. Um, yeah, obviously I can't, if someone answers, asks the same question three times, I'm going to put that one, that question one time, so if your question doesn't get answered, you, you in particular, it's because I just grabbed the same question first from someone else, so nothing personal. Um, so yeah, post all your questions in the comments. Uh, yeah, and can you, if you can, put question and then the question, just so I can identify it easy as I'm going through all the comments, so, and I'll answer them best I can next video. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, I've got something special for you. I mentioned this, uh, before. Uh, while at E3, we weren't allowed to take any video or pictures of the game running. We weren't allowed to show any imagery. But, I was able to capture some audio of the whole presentation in the Mortal Kombat Theatre. Now, no, I, as far as I know, no one's posted this online. So, well, if they have, oh well. Anyway, I've got that for you guys now. So, TMK is bringing you into the Mortal Kombat dungeon, dungeon to hear Hector Sanchez talk about the next Mortal Kombat game. And the great thing about this is you can hear the fan reaction. You can hear... The, pl the people's reaction to seeing the game for the first time. So, enjoy that one, and I'll see you guys next time to answer your questions about 
the E3 version of Mortal Kombat. Thanks for watching. Ah, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 2010 E3 Mortal Kombat demo. Um, obviously, Mortal Kombat doesn't really need too much of an introduction. Hopefully, you guys have uh, seen the trailer out front. You guys have seen kind of the new things that we're bringing back to this uh, story franchise. Uh, I'm my name's Hector Sanchez. I'm one of the producers on the game. I'm here with Brian LeBaron, John Edwards, and Paulo Garcia. They're the lead designers on the game. So we're really, yeah, they actually deserve all the applause. We'll wait until you see the game before you actually make a judgment on how good the work is. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, all right, so yeah, this is Mortal Kombat. Um, this is the newest iteration of it, and this is one that we're probably the most proud of. Uh, this is really an homage to the fans. We've really listened to kind of the fan feedback over the years. We wanted to make a Mortal Kombat that really spoke to longtime fans of the franchise. One of the things that you're going to notice right away is uh, we've made a, a lot of concessions this time around and we've actually returned to a 2D fighting plane, which has allowed us to do a lot more things graphically that we haven't been able to do before. We really wanted to keep it uh, in tune with the atmosphere and kind of the feel of the first three Mortal Kombat's, uh, which were probably the most uh, iconic in the entire series. Everybody kind of grew up with Mortal Kombat, you guys know what it's about. We really wanted to make sure that we captured that feel and the essence of the first three uh, of the first three games. So we're going to start out with a fight with uh, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, who are easily two of the most iconic characters in our lineup. They're fighting in the Living Force, which was debuted in Mortal Kombat 2 in like 1993. It's very, very cool because uh, the team has actually been able to reimagine everything in 3D nowadays. So this is just an updated version of these older 2D arenas. So you can see that we've done a lot of uh, different things with kind of like lighting. You can see like there's light shining through on each one of the players. You can see that the characters have individual fighting styles. We're actually able to give uh, each character their own animation, their own unique kind of like personality. You can see Sub-Zero and Scorpion have their kind of like more iconic, like bolder moves. If you've played Mortal Kombat before, you know what to expect. Scorpion can throw his spear out here. He can do his teleport. Sub-Zero can throw his ice ball, freeze them, and gets into a free hit. The other thing that you'll notice right away is the actual speed of the game. We've tried to increase the speed this time around. It's easily the fastest Mortal Kombat that we've ever had. We really wanted to make uh, the gameplay experience really move a lot faster. We wanted that kind of like frantic pace so that you really uh, get a sense of, uh, of how fast they're going. A lot of things that you'll see as these guys are playing as well is the amount of damage and blood that is on the characters. Now, a return of 2D plane was one of the biggest uh, requests that we had of our fan base. The second biggest request was a return to violence on this time around. So you can see that we've actually added a lot of uh, a lot of detail in kind of the damage and the for uh, the damage on the actual character model. So as the fight is kind of going along, you can kind of see the insides of the players. You can see how the costumes are getting degraded over time. Our blood decal system is actually pretty sophisticated as well. So not only is the blood kind of uh, pouring on you as you're getting damaged, it's also spraying onto your opponent as well. So it actually adds a lot more of brutality and uh, you can kind of see that the fights are actually being really, uh, are really intense. Don't do a fatality. Yeah. As you can see, kind of in between the rounds, yeah. we're really paying attention to the personality of each one of the characters. Uh, during Scorpion's victory, you see he descends into the nether room. Uh, during the in between round victory animations, you were able to see that each one of the characters has their own personality. The characters in Mortal Kombat are our most important currency. Uh, when you think of Mortal Kombat, you immediately think of like these more iconic characters. We want to make sure that we did kind of a service to those characters as we did. This next match, we're going to try to talk to you guys about another uh, request that we got a lot of the fan base. A lot of fans wanted this uh, game to have a lot more depth. They wanted Mortal Kombat to kind of be a deeper fighter this time around. 
So while it's still easy enough for the mass market player to kind of pick up and do a couple button presses and have cool stuff happen on screen, we also wanted to speak to kind of the more hardcore fan that's going to come back a, a few more times and kind of master the character. One of the ways that we've been able to do it this time is with the addition of a super meter. And we haven't really had this before, so this is really, really cool for us to kind of implement the Mortal Kombat style of gameplay. There's three levels of the super meter right now. Um, the first level is the, uh, it's just the kind of like super move. Now you can see Reptile is kind of doing uh, a standard force ball that he's had since Mortal Kombat 2. Now if the player wants to do an enhanced version of this move, you can see kind of the slime ball gets a little bit bigger. And the effect on your opponent is a little bit different than just the standard one. The frame, uh, the frame opening for performing your combos opens up a little bit more, so there's an advantage to doing that. Sector can do the same thing. He does a standard teleport uppercut, but if he does an enhanced version of it, he'll do two moves, pop them up, and open them up for an extended combo. So this really opens up a little bit more into the match and uh, really turns into a chess match on how you want to use this meter because it builds up over time with uh, offensive moves and defensive moves. The second layer of the super meter is the breaker. Now the breaker system was uh, introduced in Mortal Kombat Deception. Basically what that does is it allows for a defensive maneuver to take place and if your opponent is kind of getting into a really super intense combo and is really really beating up on you, you can choose to use two, uh, two uh, levels of your super meter to kind of break their combo. The last part of the uh, the last part of the super meter is the uh, the x-ray move. You see this kind of like glowing uh, x-ray thing right here. Now what that is, if you had the discipline to save up your super meter the entire time, you're awarded the opportunity to, to kind of uh, perform this like super ultra offensive move. So as you can see, as a player, you're really rewarded for having the discipline of holding back on this super meter, and it really, really turns into more of a strategic match as you're playing throughout the uh, throughout the game. You can choose to do these like super moves. You can choose to use your breaker if you're getting beat up, or you can kind of do this like really super ultra offensive move. Another cool thing about it is that you're actually able to incorporate these X-ray moves into your combo. So uh, if you really want to do something. Well, you can kind of like match everything up together and put an x-ray on at the end of it to kind of really enhance like wow I just beat the crap out of my opponent to kind of like show off a little. The third <laughs> major request that we've had from fans is to bring back actual real fatalities this time around. So stage fatalities are back in a big way. This is the pit stage. It made its debut in Mortal Kombat 1. We did a second version of it in Mortal Kombat 2, and this is kind of the 2010 remix that we've had of it. So it's really, really cool. Longtime fans of the series are going to be really excited about this thing, and we're excited about showing it to the fans. A lot of us kind of grew up with Mortal Kombat, and now we're growing in the franchise, within the franchise. So a lot of the stuff that we kind of grew up seeing, we're actually bringing to you guys this time around. So it's really, really cool for the team, and it's really showing in, uh, in this iteration. The last thing I want to show you guys right now before we end the demo is tag team mode. Tag team is pretty cool. It's something that Mortal Kombat has never done before, and it's added a whole new layer of complexity and complexity, sorry, and customization to the game. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the whole like uh, kind of sense of tag team. You get to pick two characters, and you kind of swap in and out. We've added a couple new gameplay elements into it this time around. We'll show you guys just the basic kind of swap outs. You can see that each character kind of has an individualized uh, entrance and exit that really speaks to their personality. As I said earlier, the characters are our most important currency in Mortal Kombat. So as you can swap in and out, you can kind of see that, but there's actually another thing that you can do in, in tag as well. What it's called is the tag swap attack, where you call in your partner with an offensive move. Now what that does is it takes up one meter of one bar of your super meter, but it allows you to kind of perform a combo and call in your partner to kind of extend the combo with somebody else. Another part of the uh, of the tag mode is the tag assist, where you can actually maintain control of your primary character and kind of borrow a special move from your partner as he comes in. It's really, really cool because there's a lot of different combinations you can have with each one of the characters. Some character special moves complement other character special moves a little bit better than some other ones do. 
you're not necessarily going to always pick just your two favorite characters. You're going to pick two characters that actually work well together. So we're really excited about that because it adds that extra layer of depth and complexity that a lot of the hardcore fans have been wanting from Mortal Kombat over the years, while still making it a little bit more accessible to kind of a mass market player where they can just come in and do some really, really cool stuff. I'm going to stop boring you guys with talking. I'm just going to let these guys kind of show off the game to you for a little bit. So uh, I hope you guys like it. As you can see, this background is Shao Kahn's Coliseum. This background made its debut in Mortal Kombat 2, and again, this is kind of an updated version of it. We've actually been able to add a lot more background animations this time of around with the switch to the 2D plane. You can see that the crowd is fully animated. You can kind of see that there's a big tormentor in the back going on. You can see that Shao Kahn is actually reacting to the match as moves are being performed. It's really, really cool to kind of do these things that we haven't ever been able to do before. And we hope the fans really, really like it because they're able to see these kind of iconic older stages like really take life in 3D in 2010. <laughs> so as you can see, fatalities are back in a big way. It's been about six years since we've had traditional character-based fatalities. Uh, last iteration, Mortal Kombat vs. DC, we had a kind of a little bit of a tamed down version of, of fatalities. Before that, in Armageddon, we kind of had a creative fatality system where all of the all of the combatants actually shared an animation system and the players were actually able to kind of create their own. So it's been a, a full six years since we've had traditional kind of character-based uh, fatalities. And we're really, really excited about that because that's six years of really disgusting, gory ideas that have been swimming around in everybody's head. So these are kind of the best of the best. Um, we want to show you guys more fatalities, but instead of kind of making you guys sit through 10 more matches so you can see everything, we actually performed, uh, we actually created a fatality montage that we're going to show for you guys right now. So if you're squeamish, you in the front row over here, you might not want to look at it. We're ready. <laughs> Finish him! That's uh, that's Mortal Kombat. Uh, I hope you guys liked what you saw. Uh, if you did, make sure you go around and tell everybody that you saw this. 
and uh, help me come back the way to tell your friends. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, you guys can kind of go out and stand in the back corner. You guys have a shift day? Spring 2011. Multiplayer, robust online, probably the coolest online experience that uh, fighting games I've ever had. Thank you.